So uh, the work that uh, I'm going to talk about here is actually sea level rise studies that started in 2010, um, funded by the National Park Service to look at sea level rise along this coast. Um, this morphed into another project with the Nature Conservancy and NOAA that um, Rebecca Most, Chad Wiggins, and some other folks have been involved in. And some of you have seen this, others haven't. Um, I, I really just, I'm, I'm showing this to you because it might be things that you can use in your own location, or if you live here and you didn't know about it, you might be interested in the data. So it's just a little information on the sea level rise models. Um, this isn't just me, this is like a lot of people have been involved over the time. So if you read really closely, many of you will, many of you will see your names in here. Uh, but we're hungry for lunch, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that slide. Um, so as we know, these we've seen a lot, groundwater is moving through these porous ecosystems, uh, moving out to the ocean, and really our coastal incline pool systems are connected to the ocean. Um, we, on the Big Island, we've been hearing a lot about pools in West Hawaii and some Hilo, but actually these are surveys that um, we did that really got to go to all these pools. There's big gaps in these areas where we know there are pools, some are new, but we're interested in making sure that these survive into the future, these ecosystems, but also amazing organisms that are dependent on them, which we're gonna get to hear more about later. So one of the things that um, we know is that fish do impact pool biota. We've been hearing about that. I want to show you an interesting thing. These two pools in West Hawaii are only three and a half meters apart. Um, this pool actually gets water in it for a short time every day. And the shrimp flood in, they're grazing on the biofilm. This pool over here has guppies in it and you don't see the shrimp. Um, so the fish cannot live underground. They're not moving between the pools. This has been stable this way for a number of years. Just keep this in mind as we go forward in this talk. Okay, sea level rise. We, we know a lot about it. We've been hearing about it. Um, in Hawaii, we're expected to have about a half meter to two meter sea level rise by 2100, um, depending on what our emission scenario is. And we are really often thinking about sea level rise from the extreme terms, the storms that are hitting the shores, causing erosion. But what I really want you to think about is what the new norm is. So this is in Miami Beach, Florida. Um, they're getting what's called sunny day flooding, where what used to be a really rare event uh, is that high tides happening more and more. And so this norm has the opportunity actually to create new habitat. We just have to plan for it. And that's really what I want to talk to you about today. So first of all, we also have to understand that sea level rise may actually cause a couple of different threats to amplify. Um, in this lower panel, you see that we have movement with sea level rise. Um, here we had tilapia in one pool, but with sea level rise, they're going to get to migrate more into other pools. We also have um, low-lying areas that will become flooded and become new habitat as sea level rises. And lastly, we have these septic systems um, which may become more in contact more frequently with groundwater as sea level rises. So in a project that I did with Rebecca Mose, Chad Wiggins, John Mora, and Aisha Gens, um, with funding from NOAA, we looked at developing groundwater flood models that were very fine resolution for incline habitats. Many of the, the national mm -hmm. flood models apps and also the one from um, UH Manoa are not necessarily fine enough scale that we can see our incline pools. So we really wanted fine scale habitats that we could share with managers and planners and look at where these habitats will emerge in future years and what are some risks that we might expect from introduced fishes, development, and sewage with this sort of intersection with sea level rise. We focused in West Hawaii. Um, and I'm gonna start with what the product was so you kind of know what, what we have. We have this on an app. Your area, if you're in West Hawaii, has these maps for all the different years we showed. Um, this is the current daily groundwater flooding at Kiholo Fish Pond. 
the higher likelihood of flooding is what is very likely. And if you notice, this, if you know this area, this is the fish pond um, with some of the outer lying wet areas. The lower likelihood would be um, areas that set that higher sea level scenario. So in 2040, this is what we can expect to see be the daily flooding. So this is not the extreme king tide situation. This is what we expect on a daily basis. You can see that the fish pond expands. There's new inclined pools, so that's great news. Um, and in particular, these places that are in different colors, those are isolated new inclined pools that have emerged on the landscape. So that's cool, let's protect those, let's think about that. And that's what this is really for. I'm not gonna go into great detail in the flood models. I'd be happy to talk to people if they would like to, and we have a lot of this in various reports in our paper. But in a nutshell, we need groundwater level information and how high is it above sea level. I'm gonna talk a tiny bit about that. We need good digital elevation models. So this is from LIDAR. We need good local tide gauge information, and we need some sort of regional sea level scenario which we're lucky to have in the United States. So here's sea level. Of course, it's never flat like this, right? But here's sea level. And we know that groundwater is actually perched higher than sea level. So wells, um, if we measure the elevation of a well up um, by Costco, it's, it can be up to several meters higher than sea level on average. And if those of us that know, um, oops, Basically, what happens on a daily basis is as the tide goes up and down, the pools and the wells go up and down. So now we introduce sea level rise, and it is permanently higher than it was prior to um, that, that movement. So basically, um, using data that the USGS collected down in Kona and then putting in our own loggers, we measured mean sea level to very like five centimeter precision elevation of that groundwater over sea level. And using this data, we actually got um, information that confirms what kind of our cartoon showed us earlier. Here's groundwater height over lower mean sea level. Here's distance from shore. Um, this is a well above Costco. So you can see it's actually quite a bit higher than um, mean sea level. This is the area where most of our inclined pools are, about 400 meters from shore. And you can see that they are at a higher level than sea level. So why do I keep talking about this? What's the importance? Well, if we're gonna do sea level rise models, most people thinking of the ocean and the shore, they're not including groundwater, but you, except for Chip Fletcher on Oahu. But you really need to include it if you're gonna model sea level rise in inclined pools. You wanna know where that flooding is gonna happen. Again, remember, new daily flooding is gonna, that's higher might fill little low areas like this and make new habitat. So where is that gonna be? And what do those maps look like? Okay, so if you're interested in your area, some of you already were working together, but if you want um, maps of your area for West Hawaii, let me know. I'm gonna show you kind of that region-wide for West Hawaii some results. Um, this is Aimakapa fish pond. At higher sea levels, uh, this fish pond will merge with some of the inclined pools shown in yellow. And we, these, these habitats that we've mapped, they're no longer going to be inclined pools. They'll be part of this intertidal environment. So this dashed line are the original pools that we've surveyed, 500 pools. We will lose them over time, not completely. However, and this is um, 2080 out here, but we're gonna get new pools emerging. So that's really exciting. If we look at West Hawaii um, and a heat map, so each of these is a West Hawaii shoreline. This is in 2018, 2030, all the way to 2080. Um, the red represents about more than 50 pools in a concentrated area. Blue would be just a few pools. But you can see the areas that already have concentrations of pools will continue to be so. Um, so we are going to have these areas, most of them in conservation areas that will be protected. If we look at some of the risks 
and, and I can talk to you more about how we assess risks, but this is um, based on our current sewage and septic tank distribution. We looked at risks of sewage to incline pools now and in the future. And this plot here, you can see the number of pools, so we're starting with the 500 that we surveyed going out to 2080. <clears throat> As our new pools emerge, there will still be some medium risk from septic tanks. This is based on our current septic tank situation and, and cesspool. And many of those are up in Fuoco. That community is doing a lot to change their, their um, cesspool situation. Um, this is current. About 30% of the 500 pools that we've surveyed have introduced fishes, although less now. Thank you to um, Ron and Leo and everybody working on that. But you can see that there is this chance of dispersion dispersal into new ponds. And so all that work that you're doing now is going to protect future pools. So we got to keep doing that and teaching the kids about that. So um, that is a very important effort to continue. Finally, um, based on our kind of our county future plans for development, this is we want to avoid this because this pool, it has nowhere to move. It has nowhere to expand. Um, and so we can see that while development risk is high in not a huge percentage of pools, it still high is in some areas, so we might want to consider that with our planning. So to, in, to conclude, I just want you to consider that when we're looking at an area, you know, some people look like oh, it's bearing lava, but some of that's going to be new ankling pools, and we really need to think about that. This is the link to our project uh, for, for the Nature Conservancy work that we did, please take a look. I'm happy to share that. And uh, I just encourage people to come talk to me if they're interested in their area. We're actually, we just got new LIDAR for the state that now we can, we started some work down here in, in South Kona, Manuka, and Keokaha. Now we can actually do some of these maps that we're hoping to do. So I'm excited. I just heard about the LIDAR two days ago, so that's very exciting. Mm. Yay, that can stand in the But um, anyway, thank you very much to everyone involved. Everybody, it's a big effort, but we can do this. Imua. Thank you. is going to infect a whole bunch of them, that might be a priority place to do. So if there's some, you know, undergrad or grad student that wants to do that, that'd be work together, that'd be really exciting. Okay, thank you.